it's a great day for me, I trust it's a great day for you. And maybe it's not a great day. I'm Dr. Kenneth Nance here coming into your space again with another broadcast to help you to redefine your today. I know the last one you would have heard maybe talking about future and finding relevance and fitting into your space and learning how to really get balanced. But I have come to realize that as I read the newspapers and look at the television, especially the news, whether the news is local or foreign, uh, we are just overwhelmed with negativity. Murders, crimes, hurricanes, floods, tornadoes, corruption. I mean, <laughs> there's so much happening. Joblessness, homelessness, and I, the noise goes on. But I, I want to see if we can find a niche somewhere of how to overcome and how to find our space today. There's two words that have surfaced really in the last two years, coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic uh, with great impact, mental health. <laughs> you know, those two words were taboos. Uh, before, it's what mental? No, me, and health. Mental doesn't go with anyone. Health. Is that a mental? <laughs> In where I come from, my country, is that you mental, which means you're crazy going off somewhere, or you have a health issue, which is usually physical. But to put both of them together, mental and health, how come crazy has to do with the health? How come this function has to do with the health? It's that's what it is. It's physical health, it's social health. Health is health is that control to what we call successful living. Uh, as you bring all the dynamics of working out, health, preventative, interventative, all that in terms of how we eat and think and drink and sleep and etc. All those things are very important for us to understand that is what health is all about. So mental can go with health. Mental can establish what we want in terms of how we are living today. It's, it's important for us to assess the fact that when I get up in the morning, how am I really handling the next couple of hours? What, what's going on here? Children, cornflakes, milk, lunch boxes. Oh my gosh, you know, cook food, buy food, traffic jam, lights. Traffic lights, children crying in the back. Oh God, school early, school late. Reach to work, parking, no parking. <sighs> Get to work, who late, red line. Who take my chair, who you take my chair, where my desk, who leave the computer on, what to do, nothing to do. We go on and off. And we go on and on. By the end of a journey, let's say you reach back home. How do we define the rest of your day. But you don't realize that how what harassed you may be or even totally out of sync or out of the reality of connectivity and synergy with those around you. And so sometimes you stop into a chair and there's no need to get up, no desire to move. And furthermore, you want to be alone. Don't ask me nothing. How are we working that? How are we grappling with the nothing? How are we trying to say, okay, hey, I can't take it no more. I had enough. You see this thing? But yes, 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 we're able. So let's have a little conversation about the able. Let's have a little conversation about how we can work this thing better. It's, it's about understanding how to deal with the problems that I have much more successfully. Hoping to find that balance in my daily routine that makes me an overcomer rather than a victim. How, how it is that I can handle the very me that feels that I am in a box and I can't move and I am there trapped 
how do I get out of that? Will I ever define where I'm at? Am I suffocating to dead? Am I too confused to think? What about my family? What about me? What about me? you know? We can just yeah, 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 and you know that's how some of us feel sometimes. But it, it, it's it's not a hopeless situation, you know, because somewhere on the line there is that thought of tomorrow. As I in the last broadcast, we were talking about future and progression and and. and um, productivity. It's important to understand to get there. Yes, we talked about decision making and plans, but I have a struggle. How am I getting there? And that struggle is within me. That struggle is matching up my goals and my visions. I don't seem to think that I can get there. Can I really articulate a future plan? Can I really articulate? the cold concept of how I am working this for the better. Yes, the phone rings, the door knocks, and I greet whoever it is on the phone. And there's a smile somewhere over the person by the door, and I smile, but behind that smile, what are we hearing? What are we giving? What is present behind that smile? What is there that is happening that I need to change? Because even though my, there's a facial smile, there's a little block in my brain that says, hey, shut down, shut down. One of the things that I think that is important to analyze is that I'm human. I'm giving breath with my anatomy of legs and hands and, and head and neck, etc. to converse to identify with future and, and, and continuum. I have a name, I have a family, I have a community, whether that's relatives or peers from school or employees from work or neighbors. What? There's a community around me that is so important for me to work with. And, and so therefore, I realized that in my very early age, uh, to whenever, maybe you may be now in your 30s or 40s, there has been something called socialization. And I have gone through community and education and neighbors, I've gone through different rules and rights and cultures and traditions. And today I am, I, I am somebody. And, and out of that, there's something that we call value. I have value. I, I, I have a value. I have what is called morals. Uh, that comes up as it work uh, out of those traditions and cultures that have established my belief systems and, and it's important for us to observe the belief systems because that is what makes me do or not do that is what makes me drink or not drink that's what makes me eat or not eat that's what makes me laugh or not laugh belief systems it is important for me to, to really appreciate how I am working those belief systems out of what I have been taught by my father and mother and grandmother and how that now plays on my emotions. Whether I want to be interconnected, whether I, I want to be just by myself, whether I want to be communicative or not, and whether I want to talk. Because, you know, I, I, I could communicate without talking. You know, I could maybe use gestures, I could do so many other things, but yet I am communicating. But yet I am doing something that is, what? Acceptable? Or even not acceptable, but I'm doing something. So I, I need to learn how to work my emotions. And that's what I want to kind of stress on on this podcast how do I work my emotions because it, it, it is important to see that my emotions are as I said just now morphing out of or, or emerging from the, the cultures the traditions the activities of my past the experiences and, and it is not that I am going to 
remember all of those things at the same time. No, I'm going to remember in connection with a present activity that is important for me to be who I am. So I remember how to tie my shoelaces or to put my shoe on. Dressing on a morning to go to work or school or go anywhere, it's not just a matter of putting things on, one has to remember. If one does not remember how to put one's shoes on, because of the experiences you've had in your past, one may never know what it is to do with the shoe. One may put food in it, one may put water, one may think it's a cup. So therefore it's important for us to observe mental in terms of how we mem remember. If I see somebody who is about to engage a conversation, just the tone of their voice makes me remember something that I didn't want to remember from my, from my past. How will I behave at that point in time? I am not going to be ready for any kind of interaction or any kind of dialogue or conversation because I will feel very put off or very against or because that person makes me remember something that is awful in my life and I do not want to remember it. But you come and make me remember it. So therefore, I am not going to have an emotion that is not going to be pleasing and congenial for any further discussion, any further dialogue. So I will pull back into myself and I will stay quiet or I will be refrain from conversations. And it is at that time now, what happens is that I begin to mull over in my brain that particular incident that I don't want to remember that is now triggered in my brain. And with that now, I start to go further back and try, as it were, open up all these other lock doors that were connected to that one incident. And so as I begin to open those doors, as I begin to see and go back there, presently, those emotions are becoming more and more negative. Anxiety, fear, confusion, anger. Are you hearing me? <laughs> it, it begins to build because just one trigger makes me see all that has been happening behind those locked doors for a long time. Notice my English, eh? You see, when you think that something done, you have to done it. You have to finish it. Did I say done it? Yes, done it. Because see, if you don't done it, you realize that just with that trigger, that situation is so alive. It never died. It was locked up and it was alive in a room. You may try to think it's dead, but now you realize it's alive. And I dare say to you, those are the kinds of experiences that causes us to use those two words, mental and health. Because they create an irrational behavior. They, be, they create an irrational activity that wants you to do something or whether it is to lash out or to become aggressive or to withdraw and to become passive. People out there, it's important to really be honest about the experiences that we have daily. It's important for us to note that when something has happened to us, whether at three years, at five years, at 10 years, at 12 years, these experiences are etched in our brain and cause certain reactions later on in our human development. So that when you are at 25, you may come up to a person who says a word to you like, get out of here or go, I don't want to talk to you. And that reminds you, that opens up the door of when you were told to shut up by one of your parents way back at five years old. You may be expecting somebody to come to meet you and that person does not turn up. That person does not turn up. And you remember how there were times in your life where you were always waiting 
waiting, maybe for daddy or for mommy, who never turned up. And so that you realize that after all these years, after all these years, those issues that you thought you would have dealt with in the past are still very alive. And so then how do I now communicate? How do I now begin to have dialogue? How do I now begin to open up, as I would say, to begin to assess the, those issues in my brain and have thoughts that become more pleasant to help me to go further in my development? I could be shut down and say, I never, you see what happened then, I want to happen again. No, 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 hold on here. What happens then it has happened, it's a then. But now I can reconcile with my past and identify process. So why did I have to wait? Who am I blaming? Should I blame? I don't need to blame. Who told me to shut up? Why? Was it something I did? I can't remember, maybe I can't remember. Was it necessary for me to hold that command as a negative, put down, that today I still can't talk or I'm still afraid to be told, shut down? I have to applaud me, and you must applaud yourself, that you have grown with those hidden things there, but you realize how shadowy you have been, how you have been very cautious in opening up, in talking, in connecting, in reevaluating, in assessing, because you didn't want a particular episode to reoccur. I hope I am helping you today. But as I begin to talk over, and I trust for the next broadcast, couple of broadcasts, I will be addressing these concepts of behavior in the, in the context of why fear now? Why fear now? Because of what happened behind us. So we have to understand that in my language now, as I communicate, I am going to be very, very cautious as to how I speak and to whom I speak. So that I will not agitate the memory. I will not cause things of the past that I don't want. Because, by the way, some of the things that you've been through in your past, you are unaware. They have been stored. But there are sometimes, episodically, things happen because of an issue, of an episode, because of a, a particular activity, and whaps, storage door open, all of a sudden, you see, and you see differently. So, it's important for you to be aware, again, that when we use those two words together, mental and health, it's not that you are going crazy or that you are losing it, no. It's that you are confronted with past experiences that have been so negative that is crippling you today. And we want you to know how to have a healthy, balanced, cognitive response within your environment without feeling the stress of danger or the stress of losing your whole equilibrium and being called indifferent. Your mother and father and grandparents spoke to you in their language. You went to school and learned another language. You came out of school and went into the workplace with another language. You come out of school, you go to the bars or you go to have refreshments online with your friends and there's another language. That in itself can be very traumatic. That in itself is a whole catastrophe by itself. And that in itself continues to impact the brain. Because how do I really feel happy and relaxed and totally abandoned within my environment when I have to contend with so many different kinds of set, language sets, talk, words? How, how do I work that? And so that is one of the things that are important. Sorry, that is one of the things that is important for us to assess how we think 
and what we do when we think. Because do remember that our day is a constant doing day. One, two, it's a constant directive day. We always give in directives. Three, we always take in directives. Go, come, go, come, do, do that, I do that, no, no. So how do I adequately, effectively work within my space with the other people to feel very contained, controlled, and content? People, as you look at this, as you hear this, I may be triggering something right now. You also want to know, oh, is that why I behave this way? That's a good question. Are you willing to sit where you are or pick up a glass of a cup of tea or sip on some nice cool drink and say, hey, let me think about those experiences I used to have that makes me now cower or be afraid of going out in the dark or talking to my friend or opening up a new idea or investing. You may be afraid of the negative impact coming to you again, but I dare say no. We are big bringing balance to you and causing you to find a frame where you can engage positively with language, communicating effectively, and having that interpersonal concept that brings you into other people's lives, that you can be assured of who you are and have a better productive day. I want you to know that let's not shy those two words, but let's be honest about engaging with those two words. And let's be understand that it establishes life for us. It establishes our next step, where we are going and how. As I end here, let me encourage you to really sip on that tea. But as you sip on it, don't begin to, don't be afraid of what you will remember. Don't be afraid of what emotion you may have. Let's remember that next week there's going to be another broadcast that is going to help you a little bit more to reaffirm yourself and to understand how to live more peaceably with you, your family, your neighbors, your friends. So Dr. Niles here, signing off and encouraging you not to be afraid of the word mental, but it also establishes a very soundness of mind. Enjoy the rest of your week. Until next broadcast, God bless you.